In this video, we review the access tiers available with Azure Storage. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and welcome to my channel. Storage options have expanded significantly since I started working with Azure. Back then it was pretty much just blob storage. Now we have blob, file, queue, and table storage. Many with different performance and pricing options. In this video, we look at storage access tiers and pricing based on how frequently we access the data. Before that, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Click the bell icon for notifications of new content, and check out my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop, Windows 365 and Intune Management, Hybrid Identities with Windows AD and Enter ID, and my latest course, A Beginner's Guide to the AZ900, available on udemy.com. Links are below. And thank you, channel members. Your support is appreciated. Here's a high-level explanation of how storage tiers work. We can pay more to store data and less to access it, or less to store data and more to access it. Storage tiers are only available on standard pay-as-you-go storage accounts based on magnetic hard drives. Provision V2 and premium storage do not use tiers. Let's start with the tiering options available for Azure Blob Storage. There are four types of access tiers available for Blob Storage. Three of them are considered online access tiers, and the fourth is an archive tier. We'll get into the archive tier in just a minute. On the screen is the cost of storing and accessing data from the Microsoft Storage pricing page. Let's start with the hot tier. This is for data that's accessed and modified frequently and has the highest storage cost, but the lowest access cost. On the screen, it shows the cost for storage in West US 2. It's 0.0184 cents per gigabyte to store the data. And the cost of write operations is 5 cents per 10,000 writes. The cost to read is 0.004 cents per 10,000. By the way, this isn't a complete list of all the costs. The price changes after 450 terabytes, and there's other costs for transactions, like listing the objects in a container. I'm just including reads and writes to illustrate the point. Next is the cool tier. This has a lower storage cost, but a higher access cost. This tier is optimized for storing data not accessed frequently. Data in the cool tier should be stored for a minimum of 30 days. There's a deletion penalty if removed before 30 days. As shown on the screen, the storage cost for cool storage is one cent per gigabyte, and write access is 10 cents per 10,000 write operations. Read is one cent for 10,000 operations. Then we have the cold tier. This is for data that's rarely accessed, but there can't be any delays to access the data if it's needed. This could be a good option for backup data. Data in the cold tier should be stored for a minimum of 90 days. Just like the cool tier, there's a deletion penalty if removed before the 90 days. The cost to store data in the cold tier is lower than the cool tier, but accessing the data is more costly. The storage cost is 0.0036 cents per gigabyte, cheaper than cool, and the cost to write and read data is higher at 18 cents to write and 10 cents to read per 10,000 operations. And finally, we have the last option, the archive tier. This is by far the cheapest option for storing data, but it's also the most costly and time consuming to access. This is an offline tier. Think of it as similar to tape backup. Data in the archive tier is not immediately available and has to rehydrate before getting it back. That can take up to 15 hours to complete with standard priority. Data in the archive tier should be stored for at least 180 days. Removing the data before 180 days is subject to an early deletion charge. This is a good option for long-term backups or compliance data that needs to be stored for a long time but accessed infrequently. The cost of archive storage is 0.00099 cents per gigabyte. Write access is as low as the cool tier at 10 cents per 10,000 operations. Read operations are significantly higher at $5, yes, dollars per 10,000 operations. There's also a high priority option for another $50 per 10,000 operations. This provides faster rehydration of the data in the archive tier. High priority takes precedence over standard and could be recovered in less than an hour. Data in an archive tier can be rehydrated by changing the archive blob to an online tier, or the archive data can be copied to a new hot or cool tier, leaving the archive tier intact. Let's take a look at a chart that compares the cost of storing data versus transactions. We'll start with the three online options. The orange line is the hot tier, this has the highest storage cost and the lowest transaction cost. It's important to use the hot tier for any data that's accessed frequently, blob content for an active website, for example. Although it has a higher storage cost, the savings and transaction cost makes it a better option. 
And apologies for the hack job on the graph, by the way. This is a good illustration of why I don't create content on Office products. On the opposite end, we have the cold tier in green. This is the cheapest option for storing data, but the highest of the options for accessing the data. If it's unlikely that the data will be accessed but needs to be saved for at least 90 days, the cold tier may be a good option. Backup data or compliance data are good candidates for the cold tier. And between the two, we have the cool tier in blue. The cool tier is a good option for data with low transactions that need to be stored for at least 30 days. Application data sets or short-term backups, for example. Let's see what happens when we add the archive tier. It doesn't display well, but on the left for storage, it's the cheapest option of them all. Transactions, specifically reads, are significantly higher. Use the archive tier for just that, archiving data. Data that's unlikely to be accessed, but has to be stored for at least 180 days. Long-term data retention like backups or compliance information, for example. So what tier should you use? Well, that depends on the workload, the amount of data stored, and how it's used. Pay close attention to how long the data needs to be stored to avoid early deletion penalties and keep data with high transactions, data that's frequently read from or written to in the hot tier. Let's take a look at blob storage tiers in the portal. Let's start by reviewing the options we have when we create a new standard storage account. We'll create a storage account. I'm just going over tiering options in this example. Let's set the primary service to Azure Blob. If we leave it as standard and go to next, at the bottom, we have the option to set the default tier. The tier selected here is used unless we specify a different tier when adding data to the storage account. If we go back and select premium and block or page blob, then go to next. Tiering is not available when we select a premium storage account. Let's take a look at a storage account. This is a standard V2 storage account. If we go to configuration under settings, at the bottom, we have the option to change the default storage tier. Notice the options are hot, cool, and cold, but not archive. If we go to a container, we'll open the container, and then go to the blobs in the container. We can either select multiple blobs and change the access tier, or if we go to the right of the blob and select change tier, from here we can change the access tier. This one's set to the default hot. Notice we also have the option to change the access tier to archive. I'm not going to do that because this is test data and I don't want to pay for any deletion penalties. But I think you get the idea. This is how we can manage access tiers from the portal. Let's talk about Azure Files access tiers next. And we'll start with what types of storage access tiers does not apply to. Tiers aren't available for Azure Files Premium or Azure Files Standard with a provision V2 billing model. In both cases, a set amount of performance is allocated to the file shares based on the capacity with premium or the file share properties with provision v2. Azure File Standard with a pay-as-you-go billing model can be tiered. There are three options we can select when creating a file share. Transaction optimized, hot, or cool. Performance or IOPS and throughput are the same for all three. The only difference is the cost of the data storage and transactions. Transaction Optimized is for data with high IOPS or transactions. It has the highest data storage cost, but the lowest transaction cost. And FSLogix File Share, or any other busy file share with many reads and writes, is a good candidate for Transaction Optimized. HOT is for active workloads with a lower number of transactions. The data storage cost is lower than Transaction Optimized, but has a higher transaction cost. This may be a good fit for file shares that don't have a lot of activity. And finally, we have Cool. Cool has the lowest data storage cost with the highest transaction cost. This is for workloads that don't have a lot of activity. Data that's backed up to an SMB share or backup of a database, for example. Let's jump into the portal and see how to configure and change Azure file storage tiers. Like before, let's start out by reviewing the options we have when we create a new file share. And for this example, we'll start with a premium storage account. We'll go to data storage and file shares. Let's add a file share. We don't have the option to set a tier. Tiers on a premium file share would not make sense. We pay a premium for performance. We wouldn't want to move the data to a lower performance tier. Let's go back to the storage accounts and we'll open a standard V2 storage account. 
From here, we'll go to File Shares under Data Storage. We'll create a file share. We'll give it a name. And now we have the access tiers with our three options, Transaction Optimized, Hot, and Cool. If we select each of the three, the performance stays the same. Let's leave it as Transaction Optimize, and we'll create the share. That takes us to the share, and now we have the option to change the tier. And if we add a file to the share, we don't have the option to change the tier on an individual file. We can only change the access tier on the share level. All these options may seem a bit confusing at first. However, if you understand the workload and match it with the tiers available, you may be able to save a lot of money on data storage. On the flip side, placing data on the wrong tier, high transaction data on a cool tier, for example, can lead to unnecessary expense. But now you know the difference between the access tiers and we'll select the option that best fits the workload. I hope this helps you better understand Azure storage tiers. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.